Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Ask your mama how she doing. <laughs> oh, hi, Peter. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm very upset, though, that we can't see your nipples right now. Excuse me? What? Is, I don't have those. <laughs> I had them removed. Yeah, that's right. And girls don't <laughs> poop. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conservatish, episode 239. The lovely Josh Slocum of Disaffected Podcast is back. Yay. And we're so happy. Hello, everybody in the little uh, uh, comment section watching live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitters. And I'll be posting this on Spotify and iTunes uh, tonight. I told everybody I told everybody in my Discord for the show that they needed to get up in here. So I better see some bitches from my show in here. There's probably some some people. That girl, Casey. Holly oh, I know, I know her. I know her. Hi, Casey. Um, and uh please uh tell people where they can find you, please. Um, in a dumpster. Uh you we can find that. um disaffected on YouTube, Rumble odyssey you can find it in an audio version on itunes iHeartRadio, google podcast pandora spotify all the usual places disaffected podcast lovely and i'm just going to put that up there like and subscribe or share or you're racist you uh, you misspelled it though it's r-a-y dash c-i-s-s race racist um speaking of racism no, uh, <laughs> here we go yeah you're on this show god damn it this is good for the oh uh you can find me everybody if you if you're new to conservatives you can find me on peter underscore feliciano on uh facebook or on instagram i'm not on tiktok because the chinese kicked me off again um uh but i will be joining in because i i got the link to the disaffected discord and I will be joining in and hitting some of you with uh, some racist comments, probably. Um, and, um, oh, I just put out a new song, a new cover song a few days ago, uh, a lovely duet of a song called Lovely, uh, originally from Billie Eilish and Khalid, or Khalid, um, uh, starring me and Courtney Gale. So everybody watch that on YouTube. Uh, and wherever you're listening, subscribe and share. <laughs> um it's so good to see you, Joshua. Thank you, you so too, much for Peter. joining Thanks me. Thanks for so having me. Yeah. Um, first things first, I wanted to start us off because it was really, it's such, it's so heartening when I meet somebody who knows who Shirley Q. Licker is. <laughs> <laughs> it brightens up my life. It brightens up my life. Charles Chuck Nip, yeah. uh, K-N-I-P-P, -P, I think it's two Ps, uh, comedian. Please talk about Shirley Q. Licker. Well, is he, is Chuck still doing it? Is he still putting it? It doesn't seem like I it. I, I so. wonder if I wonder if he got um, I wonder if he got canceled or felt too afraid to continue doing the character. Yeah. So Shirley Q. Licker is this is the racist part, everybody. Shirley Q. Licker is a is a character that comedian Chuck Nip at least used to do, um, a very working class welfare benefits black woman with 19 children who asked who is my baby daddy and it drives people bat shit insane <laughs> it makes white people insanely angry yeah that's true and he, it's very very funny he yeah. does this character to a t but i don't care who you are I don't care what kind of bullshit you're trying to lie to me about. You all know Miss Licker. You all know that woman. That is a real person. You know it. Don't even lie. Um, I think that, you know, I mean, obviously I don't, I don't know him, but I think the backstory to that was um, that he had, um, that he knew a woman when he was growing up. Yeah. I think um, it was his caretaker or his, nanny or something like that yeah and um who talked like that and you know a real regional sort of mississippi uh black american dialect that she spoke very particular kind of dialect right. and he loved he loved her and he says and he loved it so much that he begged her to teach him how to say things like she did and she did i think it's very sweet actually it is actually very sweet i mean it, obviously it's making fun of 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 uh, lots of different stereotypes and making yep. fun of all kinds of shit, but in that character gives you a lot of gives uh, uh, Chuck a lot of a lot of leeway, and it's just so fucking funny, especially seeing him live. There's this one clip of him um, 
in I think it's Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, or no New Orleans, it, one of those southern, one of those New southern Orleans, things. New Orleans. And he's talking about how <laughs> he says at one point he's like, "All the tops in the room, raise your hand. Let's save some time for everybody. All the tops. If you're a top, if you're a bottom." And he's like, not if you're a versatile. Versatiles give tops a bad name. They'll be all <laughs> like, they're all like, oh, I'm versatile. And you get you get them home and their ass go up faster than a cat being scratched. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I swear to God. Versatile so, just means a shamed bottom. Oh my God. Oh my God. And they're trying to double their chances of getting fucked. Yeah, precisely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. If I can you know it's funny. Good, good. You you were talking about when I do my character Shelby. Mm. Um uh I, you detected I think you're right Peter. You said this you, you asked I think I think you asked if she was related to Shirley Q Licker. Um a little bit of Shirley Q does does creep in, but that character that I do Shelby, this is based on a white woman who was my boss. Really? Um yeah, yeah. Shelby, I my first okay, I'll <laughs> Okay, Are we gonna break gonna the fourth wall right now. Break the fourth wall, yeah. maybe. All right. So my first real job out of college was at a a chicken dinner weekly newspaper. Um, you know, you know, it's the community newspaper where they they print the notices about the chicken pot pie supper at the Methodist church. Oh, okay. And okay. you know, photos of the brownie troops parade and stuff. You know, just real, real local news. You know. Beautiful. And this was my first real job out of college. And when you, when you work at a small paper like that, you have to do everything. So I started out as photographer, um, but then they, I had to be a sports photographer and I don't know anything about sports. Hmm. Uh, and then I had to be a sports reporter, which was ridiculous. Right. Okay. I, I could not write any. I was like, there's some people here with a ball and they're, <laughs> you know, there were some men in some nice pants. Right. And, and, and the blue team wins. Yay. I know. But she, Shelby, Shelby was the Shelby was the manager of the newspaper. It was called the Amherst New Era Progress. This is Amherst, Virginia. And this is how. So let me tell you about Shelby. OK, Shelby was, I don't know, mid 60s, a uh, white woman. Hmm. She had the teased ginger brown shellacked helmet wow right she right. looked at, she looked like a cross between a retiring mary Kay sales lady and andora from bewitched like, i don't know who andora is but I'm, you I'm remember sure. the show bewitched yes sir the mother-in-law sam samantha's mother who was always okay, okay. oh yeah, I, maybe, for, I forget I'm you're getting, not as ancient getting, as i am i'm getting tammy faye baker vibes yeah kind of but not not quite that bad frosted pink lipstick um, matching manicured pink nails with the little sparklies on them. She mm. drove, she drove a white Cadillac sedan Deville to work De every day, and you would see her. She would come up the street like this, right? <laughs> and she would answer the phone this way: bring, bring. She, this woman, never had an expression on her face. This was mm. the expression. Amos Nelson Publishing. That's how she would answer the phone. <laughs> God bless her heart. Now, what? Where is Amherst? It is about twenty miles outside of Lynchburg, Virginia, which is Lynchburg. central Central Virginia. Okay. Amherst was a little town. I when I lived there it was about four thousand people. Blue Ridge Mountains. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. All right. I like the, Lynchburg feels like a problematic. <laughs> Everybody problematic says that there. it wasn't. It was named after some dude named Lynch. Mm -hmm. It was not named after a popular 19th century pastime. In right. the South. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after we the said, ice cream social, we're going to hang a black. I know. We used to say, where do, where do you live? Well, I, I live in Lunchbag, Virginia. That's what right. I live in say. Auschwitz, <laughs> Georgia. Yeah. And my favorite, my my favorite piece of correspondence when I graduated from Amos Nelson Publishing, I moved up to the Daily Paper in Lynchburg, and um, I used to get, I used to, well, this was around the late '90s, early 2000s, so you're still getting a lot of paper correspondence. And my favorite one was a letter that I got addressed to Joshua Slocum at 
what the, what the hell was the name of that? I don't even remember the name of the paper I worked at. Mm. Whatever. Anyway, it said Joshua Slocum, um, Lynchburg vagina. Oh, that's that, yeah. <laughs> That sounds about right. That sounds yep. about right. Sounds like a white woman. I have, by the way, um, I have, uh, I won't, I won't necessarily get into too much character assassination, but I will say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because there's been a lot of people who have given me a lot of shit over the years. I think it's official. I have, I have officially retired as the white liberal girl whisperer. <laughs> no more white liberal girls for me. I am, I am hanging up. <laughs> I am hanging up my jersey. <laughs> No more fucking, I'm tired. I'm tired of, uh, of the fighting. I'm tired of the uh, self-righteousness, the inability to separate behavior from belief. The inability to separate wow. behavior from belief. Now, that can happen on the, on the right. That can happen in libertarian. I'm not saying it can't. Your, you, your show is very good for breaking down a lot of mental health issues, emotional issues, things like that, trauma. Um, and both real and imagined. Um, and and what I find is that from my experience, and maybe this is just because I've lived in San Francisco and New York the majority of the last 10 years, I have been surrounded by people who believe themselves to be so superior, so self-righteous, that it clouds their their ability to even believe that other people, that that people who disagree with them might have their own processes, priorities, interests, hobbies, jobs, upbringing and their own motives. You know what I'm saying? And I find that I'm, I'm kind of done trying to convince. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of good successes over the years, a lot of great relationships. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fucking done. <laughs> I'm fucking done. Well, I mean, who can blame you because there's only so much progress you can make with people like that. And, and you hit a wall with them. Right. Um, it, it, I like what you said about separating belief from behavior. What I've noticed about being canceled, um, personally, watching other people be can I mean, everybody's being canceled, is it, we assess the morality and the character, the quality of somebody's character very differently today than we might have done even 15 or 20 years ago. Right. It is no longer enough. This is how you know that woke is a religion. And leftism today is a religion. Yes, I, I'm, I'm not restricting. I'm not restricting my commentary only to the extreme left. I'm talking about the entire left. Yeah. And if you're part of that, I am talking about you. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. Uh, because you are either objecting to that or you are supporting it right. um, by not saying anything. So, yeah. Um, we don't judge people by their behavior at all. We judge them by what we believe their beliefs to be. Correct. Um, and that is part of why I get, I am, I am very easily provoked by um, what I perceive to be any attempt to monitor my emotions or monitor my beliefs. Um, and I'm provoked by it because I grew up in an abusive household that was full mm -hmm. of that kind of mm -hmm. psychological jail warden behavior, right? right? Um, I don't like it. It's sick. It's disordered behavior. Um, I know it for what it is and I can't stand it. And that is, um, that is what people are doing. Um, well you and all right, I'll, I'll bring it out right here right now, uh, about my job. If you want, Peter, please. Uh, cause you and I were talking about that a little bit, um, before the show. So I have resigned from my job of 20 years. I am currently until the end of the year, the executive director of a nonprofit organization called funeral consumers alliance think of us like we were consumer reports magazine but only for the death and dying transaction so our job is to educate people about what their options are because funerals are often extraordinarily expensive for the average american family they don't have to be but people fall into financial traps and we also advocate we speak as a lobbying voice for the 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 american consumer um, when regulatory issues come up. So for example, one of my final tasks for this job is writing a response to um, um, a rulemaking by the Federal Trade Commission that's considering toughening up consumer regulations, requiring American funeral homes to post their prices on their websites, for example, which only less than 20% of them ever disclose their price online. Uh, there's all sorts of things about buying funerals and cemetery plots 
that are stacked against the consumer who is in a grieving state of mind. So the job of this organization is to try to rectify that imbalance. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for 20 years, very successfully. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm being canceled now um, from both within and without the organization. Uh, one, we have a number of member organizations. They're local nonprofits that do the same work at a volunteer basis on the state level. Our biggest and largest member organization, um, without communicating to our board of directors, without communicating to me, doing this by surprise and deliberately, put out a press release a, a few weeks, about a month ago now, uh, naming me a racist, a misogynist, a transphobe. Um, and somebody who does not care about the common humanity of other human beings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hysterical. Uh, hi, People's Memorial Association and Amanda Stock. I'm talking about you directly, bitch. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Get you faced, bitch, and all of you bitches on that board, you censorious fucks. Right. Yeah. And, and by the you way, just as a side the, note, you think you're saving the world? No, you're not. You're servicing your own egos. You decided that it was more important for you to pull funding from an organization that was on the cusp of the biggest consumer victory at the federal level in 20 years so that you could hold on to your princess crown and make sure that you everybody saw that you were getting rid of the bad man who says bad things on his private time, just like I'm doing right now. This is my private time. I'm not on the clock here, which is why I'm calling you fucks bitches. Right. And by the way, I sent her a letter. I didn't note. think I was going to get that. Uh, no, that's about okay. It, but I got that way about it. I'm happy. You're on the right show. This is a safe place, Joshua. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I sent her a message because the reality is, is uh, as as uh, as the uh, former uh, heavyweight title, uh, <laughs> or actually lightweight um, uh, 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 champion of white girl whispering, I know what white liberal girl is like, right? And I'm a person and, of color. And, uh, yeah, right? and unfortunately, it's it's white liberal girl, it's white liberal young woman, and it's white liberal middle-aged woman and older now these days too. Absolutely, absolutely. And listen, I call out bullshit anywhere it comes to, and, I'm, and I know that you from your show and from our conversations, you do as well. But I like to stop the bleeding right where it's most acute right where it's it's mostly bleeding right now, especially because a lot of these white liberal men, let's say, are being led around by the nose by white liberal women, right? So let's, if we fix that, that fixes a lot of, I mean, I, I had someone, I was having a conversation with a fan of mine who was talking about how she was dating this, um, this white liberal guy and then she stopped and then his Facebook started changing <laughs> his face. What a surprise. His Facebook started changing into like, maybe I was wrong about these certain things. I believe dudes are a little bit more malleable if you dangle pussy. All right. <laughs> I'm well, just this saying. Is, <laughs> yes. This is the question though. You know, we I talk about this a lot on my show. Um, yeah. um, I do believe today it wasn't always this way in living memory, but it, I do believe it is this way today. I do believe that white liberal women are the biggest problem right now. Women Absolutely. are responsible for woke. Women are responsible for trans. Women are the ones who are castrating their children and saying what a beautiful, lovely trans butterfly they have. This is a woman's project, yes. not a male project. And it's not a response yeah. to patriarchy either because that doesn't exist in the United States. But uh, what I really want to know how to do is how to get men to stop putting up with this bullshit. We can say that men are being led around by their girlfriends on the mm -hmm. left. But men don't have to allow themselves to be led around. No. Right? right. Um, I know we talked about this the last time uh, we were together on your show, but honestly, I've got to think of some ways to I, men, you got to buck up. You really, really have to buck up. It's not, you know, women may be the ones driving this right now, but you guys mm -hmm. are sitting there, mm -hmm. you know, basically taking your balls off and putting them in a jar right. um, and just being like, yes, dear, yes, dear. Why? Right. Why are you doing this? So uh, on the micro is really where we change it. Um, and I've been, like I said, I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> one liberal, one white liberal girl at a time. Um, and uh, I think the biggest thing is, and I find this is not just in, in politics. And this is this might sound a little misogynistic. So everybody go ahead and um, suck my fucking dick if you disagree. But um, here's the deal. Um, <laughs> here's the deal. Children need boundaries. 
so do white girls. <laughs> <laughs> so do women. Okay, let's just talk about it this way. You can you start start saying he's calling us children. Sometimes you act that way, bitch. Now, here's what I'm saying. I find from my gra on the ground experience that I've been a little bit that a little bit of a jerk, being a little bit of an asshole, makes me get more pussy and makes me retain better relationships. Why is that? Why is it that the schlub, the guy who's a, who has no job, living in, in, in his mom's basement, fucking, you know, uh, 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 with felony arrests, blah, 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 can get girls, and the guy who, like, went, did all the right things, and da, 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 why is he, you know, uh, an incel, right? The, the fulcrum is not, the fulcrum is not being a winner on paper. I find, and this is straight relationships, I find that there is something, that, what's attractive in the schlub is the confidence. What's attractive in the schlub is the fact that she she smells that she can't bully him. That he could say, I don't give a fuck and find somebody new in two fucking seconds, right? And that's attractive to women. I don't, I don't need to necessarily go into why, but I know that that is. So there are healthy elements of that. That doesn't, again, there are healthy elements that we can extract as men who don't want to be schlubs living in our parents' basement. Yeah. There are healthy elements of taking the rue of that and, and, and you know, gold mining it out and saying, why is this? Let me implement this into and making a lot of money and being a nice person. But there's a difference, as I've talked about it ad nauseum on my show, and, and um, is that there's a difference between nice and sweet. Yes. Girls don't think I'm nice. They know I will say, you know, nigger, faggot, kike. They they yeah. know I'll say any word, make any jokes. I'll go for. I'm not afraid of them, but they know that I'm sweet. So that, as an example, when you know uh, I had this ex who was flying it, just like I'm, I'm. What do you need to? What do you need to eat? What do you need to do this? I'm. I want to take care of your fucking stupid ass. But yes. the yes. But women, but women when they're surrounded, especially in New York City. Austin, certain other Los Angeles, San Francisco, they're surrounded by unsatisfi unsatisfying men, but they work on paper. They're nice. They're nice. They yeah, say all the right things. They, they vote all the, the right ways, but the they, they, they fucking, they no vagina feels a fucking thing for them. <laughs> right? Except a slight dry rasp. <laughs> right. A cough, <laughs> a death rattle. I know. See, this is the thing, and it it it's, it feels funny to talk about this being a gay guy with no experience of of ever having been in a relationship, a romantic relationship with a woman. Right. But I'm observant, and I've observed a lot of people. <laughs> um, and the thing about it, you know, I get. I, I say this with my friends all the time. It's, you know, my gay my gay guy friends. Um, you've got to meet my friend George. Um, you should have him on the show too. I'll talk sure. to you about that sometime. He's, what? he's extremely funny, but like me, you know, we went to college together, George and I, we were both liberal gay guys. We studied queer theory. We studied French postmodernism, post-structuralism, nice. all that sort of shit, right? Foucault. Foucault oh, it's Foucault for days. And we, we both come out the other side and I'm not going to speak for George, but, um, uh, you know, I, I have become substantively more conservative over the mm -hmm. past several years. I'm not one of those people who says, I didn't leave the left, the left left me. The left did leave me, but I also did leave the left. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't have as many liberal views as I used to. I have some, but but not as many. Right. Um, and George got there after a while, too, and we're both looking at this and, and saying, you know, how weird it is to be our age and to be saying the things we're saying and listening to the conservative talk radio that we listen right, to. Right, so right. it feels a little funny saying this, but it does seem that there's something to the idea, the traditional idea of the complementarity between men and women. Mm -hmm. um, men and women generally and on average, not everybody, you must supply all your own not alls from here on out. I won't give any more caveats, okay? <laughs> I love in that general, you do that by the way. Continue, I, and I'm going to keep doing it until yeah. people uh, remember yeah. to govern themselves. Right, right, right. right. Um, in general, men and women have sex typical psychologies, and they are different. Right. And men and women, when they relate together in a healthy way, enact boundaries on each other in equal measure. Sure. Right. 
Yeah. I'm not saying anyone has to do it this way. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have to be a traditional woman or a traditional man. I'm certainly not a traditional man, obviously. But that is what is missing. The, the balance is out of balance. We see it. I mean, the, the big prop, look, look at the number of fatherless children. That, that was a big problem when I was a little kid. I didn't have a father, but it's even worse now, statistically. Right. So many kids growing up without a father. So the women have no man in the home to depend on either as a breadwinner, a disciplinarian, um, uh, another, somebody else to lean on when you can't take any more shit from the kids and you need someone else to take a different approach. Right. right. Um, but the kids also see they have no male role model. They have no, they they're not seeing a partnership between two adults. They're seeing a, an overly stressed out single parent. Right. right. But then you get into then you get into relationships that people are having today. And you see this on the left side of the aisle. Um, I used to really react badly. Even a couple of years ago, I was kind of, I hate to say this because I was kind of offended that, um, and being offended is stupid. Don't be offended, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm embarrassed that I was ever offended about anything. Right. Um, but I got, I used to get a little offended when I heard men being described as cucks or cuckolds, but frankly, that is, that is exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Um, it's, it's men who yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear, uh, wearing their top knots and their man buns and allow, you know, holding all the signs for all the social justice protests that the girlfriends want to do. This is not a balance, right? No. And the thing is, is that my fight is always for fulfillment. You know, I'm 30 fucking six. I don't have time to, I mean, I learned this pretty early on, much earlier than 36, but like, I don't want to waste my fucking time. If this is my only life, just because it says on paper that, or I, you know, am surrounded by people who will tell me one thing is it will make me happy, but I keep doing that thing and it doesn't make me happy. Maybe there's a lesson I should pay attention to myself. Maybe I should pay attention. I should sit, meditate, go on a fuck it, whatever I want to do, but get in touch with what actually makes me happy. And yep. every girl, you can be raw, raw, fem I said it this way, so everybody cover your ears, but you could be raw, raw, feminist all you fucking want, but whose pussy gets wet when I choke them, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. So do you want that experience or do you want to but it says uh, he is a really nice guy i mean my pussy's dry as the fucking desert but he's a nice guy you know there's got to be a little bit of danger for some fucking reason i don't know what it is but i've i've interviewed and interviewed i'm i'm, I'm very interested in this shit in the dynamics and relationships yep. and mental health and sex and all this stuff in politics and i talk about this fucking endlessly i could never run out of steam to have conversations and to dig intellectually and I, I have heard from many women. I mean, years ago, I went on a tear of like hooking up with, <laughs> let's just say women who were either fresh out of a relationship or <clears throat> maybe about to be. Um, and anyway. Um, not so sorry. fresh out of a relationship. Sorry, sorry. Um, and the experience that I heard is that, why well, I, I married him, I was young and I mean, I, I, you know, it worked and I was, and we had kids and we did all the, I, I checked the boxes of the thing you're supposed to do. And I fucking hate this dude. And he does all the things I want him to do, but I feel nothing for him. Right. And then they come up against me and I'm a bit of a, I'm a little bit of an asshole. I'm not an asshole. And again, I want to stress to dudes who are new to this. It sounds like, oh, all I need to do is just slap a girl in the face. No, stop, dumb, dumb. <laughs> like there's a different and we can get into the particulars, but I'm saying there is a. There is something different. Doing everything a woman wants you to do makes them bored, makes them annoyed. I don't know what the fuck it is, whether it's nature, whether it's here's here's what it could fucking be. We're talking about evolutionary, whatever. Let's, you know, let's make believe thousands of years ago, me and a girl and our child through the fucking woods. And I and and I've got a spear and she's got the baby. Someone needs to kiss the boo-boos and someone needs to stab the wolf. Correct. Okay. And Correct. if I turn around and kiss the boo-boo, she's like, what are you doing? Your bicep is three times my size. What are you, what are you fucking? Right. Someone needs to do that. And that requires 
boundaries sometimes yep. when a woman is testing you to try to see if you're the fucking wolf stabber, you got to be a goddamn wolf stabber and be willing to take the L, meaning take the loss and just say, oh, she's not ready to level up to fulfillment. Fine, go ahead. But I'm not going to adjust myself. Right. I'm not going to cut away pieces of what's true for me to satisfy your fucking ego. Now, I don't know, obviously, I don't know because I'm not a straight guy, but I would imagine that most normal men also don't want a woman uh, in the complimentary way. They don't want a dish rag. They don't want some woman who's just like, uh, you know, everybody, I think there's this idea that you either have that sort of girl boss cuck relationship and the only other alternative to that is a domineering man who literally treats his wife as a slave. She has to ask him permission right. to go to the bathroom. Right. No, our men don't want that. No, that's not what anybody's asking for. I, I, no. I would guess that men don't want a diffident dish rag of a woman who can't make up her own mind either. Does that's anybody why I, that's want why, that in a partner? That's why I don't date Asians. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, girls. I'm kidding. You're welcome in the boat too. Um, but no, I, I'll speak. I'll speak as a as a as a fucking you know you know uh, uh, not domineering, but as a as a secure man. I don't want that. And I t and I've told all of my partners that I don't want that. I want somebody who is honest with themselves. There are so many yeah. times, you know, the, uh, uh, this ex, you know, put a certain way, like it felt so good. I don't have to do everything. And I'm like, yeah, you don't have to do everything. Cause in this, in New, in New York city and San Francisco, Oh, I'm a businesswoman. I'm a businesswoman. I'm, I'm violently unhappy, but I'm doing, I'm a businesswoman. Yay. Feminism. Femin the more a feminist a woman is, the less happy she fucking is. Why is that? And bitch, if this is the only fucking life you live, why are you wasting it? Trying to make some fucking, uh, uh Gloria, not Vanderbilt, whatever the fuck. Steinem. Stein, what trying to make these fucking feminists happy? There are not. It's not only two options where either you're going to be a fucking blue-haired executive with you know shoulder blades not pulling it off as good as Grace Jones. I had to make it gay for you, um, or <laughs> or or you know this like subservient. I'll do anything. That's not what I want. Dudes don't want that shit. Not real dudes who are secure in their shit. You know. Okay, I'm sorry, but I do have to do this, Peter. Because you what? said Grace Jones. I have to do the scene from Boomerang. <laughs> you are going to turn down a pussy like this. But it is staring you smack in your face. <laughs> no man can say no to this pussy. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best scene ever, ever, ever. And everybody should go listen to uh, Pull Up to the Bumper, baby. <laughs> and your long black limousine. She was a bad, she still is a badass. She is Every a badass. Seen, like, She's a complete badass. Yeah, fucking, you know, pictures of her on stage like a year ago with like fucking giant, you know, headdresses and shit. She don't give a fuck. Yeah, she's she's still carrying the torch. Cher's been a little lazy lately. She hasn't dressed up like a turkey for a while. But Grace Jones, <laughs> Grace Jones has got it going on. You know, I want to go back to something you said earlier about the difference between sweet and nice. Because I think that is a really important difference. And I think it also has to do with the fact that people don't judge character the correct way anymore. So you said, you said of yourself, I'm not nice, but I'm sweet. Here's what that means to me. I don't know if it means the same thing to you, but um, I'm definitely not nice. I don't like nice. Nice is not a character trait that I admire in anyone. Yeah. Okay. Nice is fake. Right. Um, it's not, that's not deep content. That's surface packaging. Okay. Um, I'm not nice, but I am substantively kind to people who need kindness. If you are my friend and you are going through something really terrible, I am going to invite you over to my house. I'm going to cook for you. I'm going to literally let you cry on my shoulder. I'm going to make you up a nice bed. I'll give you a kitty cat and I'll let you have a pity party and we can watch your favorite shows on TV and I will take care of you. And I, then I will help you make a plan to get out of where you're getting out of, right? right. Um, none of this requires... Nice. It doesn't require buckling under to social manipulation or casting your vote because somebody else said this is the only moral thing to do. Behavior, 
how you actually treat people. It, you know, what you actually do with your life, what you do with your money, what, what, what petit, you know, it, this stuff matters. The surface stuff matters to some degree, but it, it often comes down to a matter of taste. Certain people's personalities are either to our liking or not to our liking, but that may or may not indicate anything about whether they are a substantively decent person. Of course, on my show, I talk a lot about personality styles Right. that do indicate that you are not a substantively decent person. We call them right. cluster B personality disorders. Right. But there's a whole range of variation in personality and affect and, and tendencies out there that has nothing to do with mental illness or having a disorder, right. that we are fixating on these things to the exclusion of what actually really matters. Right, right. And not just what actually really matters, but like I was saying, it was like this So I've known people who I know a guy and I won't say the exact, you know, I talked about it on the last show where I was, I, um, and again, not just everybody, you should go listen to the song, but the last episode was breaking down whether or not Kanye was anti-Semitic. <laughs> I wonder where I came on it. Um, well, I have Jewish friends. So that means, um, <laughs> stop being lazy, everybody. Um, now when I, and in that episode, I was talking about how the fact that I know a guy who I, okay, not only does he vote a way I really think is not great, like not only is it just like, ugh, I don't like that he's voting that way, although I don't know the particulars, but I know I know the particulars, um, but he also worked for a certain organization that I won't necessarily, but let's just say a group that was he worked for them in the censorship office calling for censorship of certain people on social media. Now, now, hang on. Where am I going with this? I'm saying, but at the same time, even though he worked for the enemy, because the reason I'm not famous I, is, you know, <laughs> me not being famous is a tragedy on par with the Holocaust. Um, the, the reason I'm not is because of horrendous, you know, similar to what you've brought, what, I mean, it's hard enough being a creator right or to be someone who's honest on social media and yep. and to be fighting the but to be also uh shadow banned censured kicked off yep. you know completely all of which is going on with you all of which is going on with me and yet this man outside of social media outside of politics outside of what he does for his job has said things and behaved in a way which has literally saved my life this mm -hmm. is a man i know is va is a valuable Heart, gentle, kind, patient, bad ass motherfucker, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm not saying that 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 um, makes it okay what he did for his job for a couple for a couple years there. I'm not saying that it writes off and gives a blank check to the way. But I'm saying I again I have the option when faced with with interacting with this person and maintaining that friendship to either take that personally or or value. Again, the, the difference between behavior and, and, and belief. Would I like it if he woke up? That would be fucking amazing. And not that to say he still works for them, but like, would it, would I like it? Absolutely. But I am now faced with the option of what do I value more? And as long as he's respectful of the boundary, and he is, he mm -hmm. knows that I'm I'm an outspoken whatever, and we never talk about politics. We never talk about which way we're going to vote. We never talk about whatever. And yet we value our relationship to, enough to maintain that respect and that love. And there's a million other things that we can talk about and do talk about, right? So I use him as an example just to say that there is, I can... I have practiced separating belief from behavior enough to maintain the relationship there. You know, it's, it's very difficult for, for a lot of people to separate those two things. And I'm, I don't always do the best job myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm human and I'm guilty of, of, well, almost everything that I, almost everything that I criticize on the show, I have done. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and still do sometimes because I'm not yeah. perfect and I fuck up and I have to apologize and um, take my foot out of my mouth or put it in. I don't know which way the thing is supposed to go, but yeah. um, I, but I think it's a matter of degree. I, this is how my perception 
is over the past six years that my life has changed significantly and my views have changed significantly. I've become more conservative. I, I'm absolutely not a liberal in any sense anymore. Um, I have perceived that almost everybody around me was a liberal or a progressive, both professionally and in, in my online social circles. And right. I mean, my real life social circle is actually very, very small. Um, but I have perceived that, and this, this might, we might be in an, in some sort of prisoner's dilemma iteration, all of us, like not knowing what the other one is going to do. My perception may be wrong, but my perception has been that I have become unacceptable morally to a lot of people who used to say they really liked me or they admired right. my work or this right. or that. So I have, I've pulled back. I haven't called. I haven't sent cards. I haven't sent emails. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am pretty sure that I'm at least 75% right. I do think that most of those people do think badly of me now, right. uh, because they're not sending cards and they're not calling either. Right. right? right. Um, I don't know. I, I confess that I have, I don't think I am capable of having a meaningful relationship of any sort now with somebody who is a hard left progressive. I don't think I can separate the two things. And, and maybe the people, maybe, maybe some of my former liberal progressive friends would be sitting here saying, that's how I feel about you too. And fair enough. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's so extreme. It, you know what it is, Peter? I don't, I don't trust people anyone now. And I, I, I distrust, I actively distrust liberals right. from, from experience because right. the people, the people who have canceled me and I, I've been mini canceled in many different ways over the years, as many people have, this is now my job cancellation. But in, in all of those instances, the people who have canceled me have been progressive liberals. I have not canceled them. I have not screamed at them. I have argued with them. I've said, I don't think this is right. I think this is nonsense, mm -hmm. but I have not stalked to their social media so that I could screenshot it and send it to their employers. I have not opened up a whisper network over the telephone. They did that to me. I did not do that to them. So I don't trust them. And you know what else? Almost every single one of those people was a woman. Yay! I have never been as as badly treated, <laughs> lied to, smeared by a man to even a tenth degree to what women have done to me. And yet, I bet those bitches, most of them white, right? Am I saying? Am I almost am I almost all of them white? Okay. Ninety nine point nine percent white liberal women. And yet, I bet those white bitches probably went to uh, uh, you know a bachelorette party at mm -hmm. the fucking at the gay bar. Yeah. Right. Oh, they loved me. They loved me when I was a fun gay. Mm -hmm. When I was their fun gay, that they could they could wine mom out with me, right? You know? When they could, when you were their pet, when I was their pet, yep, right. And and now, as a gay man who says, "Hey, this is my community," um, you you trans queer the TQ part, um, you're no, you're in my living room, not the other way around. Get the fuck out of my house, right, right, right. right. Now they act like I have no moral standing. You or know, that you need now, to get now my out gayness of the house. doesn't count. Now I'm the enemy of the gay. How does that work? Right. <laughs> and, and even though you helped build the fucking house, now yeah. you now they're trying to kick you out. They did the yeah. same thing. They with believe NFL. it's their house now. It's right. their house. Because white women are the devil. But <laughs> but <clears throat> but it's the same thing I noticed. It, and you know, years and years and years ago, people were talking about, oh, by the way, shout out to uh, Mountain Morticia. She said she was late. She was being a trad wife, making her, her husband a sandwich. God bless you. I love good girls. Hey, Morticia. Shout out to good girls. Um, but, and send me your uh, single friends. Um, anyway, um, so they did the same thing with NFL, where it was like, why aren't you guys? It's almost like, okay, let us into the club. And then as soon as we we come, okay, fine. You have our arm behind our back, or really the advertisers have our arm behind our back. This, the board of directors has our arm behind our back. We'll let these fucking broads in. And then the broads come into the club and say, "I want. I don't like this part of the club. Why does it? Why are you even here? Why are you even fucking here? Right? No dudes is knocking down the fucking door of the View and being like, "Hey, let me in. Why are there's why is it only women on the view? Let us in." And then we come yeah, in. Yeah, we don't we, do that shit. We don't do that shit to you, right? We come in and then all of a sudden we're like looking around, "Why aren't there any uh uh animal heads and guns on the walls? What the right. fuck?" Like 
it's self-centeredness and it's childish. Yeah. The thing you were talking about, why aren't men sit standing up? There's mm -hmm. it's subtle. It's, and sometimes overt, but often as Patrice, the greatest comedian of all time, rest his soul, Patrice O'Neill, he said they have the pussy hostage, right? Okay. Every dude who's ever been on a date with a woman knows this experience. It's a subtle, unspoken, okay, go ahead and say something wrong. Go ahead and say you don't have a good relationship with your mom. Go ahead and don't offer to pay, but also don't let me try to pay. Go ahead and do something. Go ahead and say you like a certain mm. show that I don't like. Go ahead and say you vote the wrong way. Go ahead. And it's subtle. It's not even malicious. It's okay. not even malicious. It's implied. It's an energy in the room. It's implied, right? Yeah. And mixed with the fact that, okay, all I have to do is, as a dude, I think, we're very we're very manipulative in our own way. Girls get fucked on the back end. Guys get fucked in the not in the good way. Guys get guys get fucked in the front where okay. there's all these speed bumps you got to jump over. They got the hook pussy hostage, and then as soon as you give it to us, girls get fucked on this on the back end because I already got what I needed. I got the pussy, and mm -hmm. I held and now I have love hostage. That's the one. That, okay, you ah, gave me which, ah, interesting, right? So now I have love hostage, and now I said what I needed to do. I said what I needed to said. I need to. I lied what I needed to lie. I I put off the. I wore the right thing, and I and I brought you to the right place. And I we don't go anywhere. Uh, I brought you there, and I did all this stuff. I got what I needed. Now what the fuck are you gonna do to make me stay? To make me want to stay with you. And girls have not perfected that. Girls have not worked out that muscle. We've been working out that muscle, uh, you know, to the point where we'll wear pussy hats and do stupid shit that makes people, that makes women vomit, right? Just to get into their good graces at the implied vagina, right? But they haven't worked out how to make us want to stay with them. Right. So as, as, as people are always talking about, like, you know, uh, as Morticia and being a trad wife, like, pff, sorry, bro, I'm 36. I need that fucking trad wife shit. And if you're not ready for that, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't need to waste my fucking time trying to anyway, I'm going off on a rant, but you understand yeah, no, what I'm saying? I do understand. It's interesting. It's this, it's interesting because of course I don't have this personal experience. Um, it's it, the same dynamic doesn't we have pro, gay men have particular problems. Lesbians have particular problems. Um, you're with different psychological dynamics mashing up. You're going to get different sets of problems in different mm -hmm. kinds of pairings. Right. Uh, that problem doesn't happen with gay men. And for the plain, simple fact that men, men are sluts. Uh, yeah. You know, the reality, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think men are far more promiscuous than most women are. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's evolutionary, right? right? Doesn't, doesn't mean, doesn't mean that just because it's natural, that means any behavior goes. I'm not saying that, but I am saying, yes, I think we are wired up this way. So when you get men together, it doesn't matter. You know, you got some twink here who says he's going to withhold the pussy. Who gives a fuck? There's another one right around the corner in a phone booth. Well, we don't have phone boots anymore, but you know, no, I'm serious. I mean, you can get dick anytime you want from anybody. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that dynamic just is not there. We have other problems, but that's not one of our problems. Right. Uh, I do want to say one thing. I, I, I do want to say one thing about this, you know, the whole bitching and complaining about white women. I have a friend who brings this point up and I, and I think it does deserve an airing there, there, there is a sense in which this can go too far and can be very frustrating um, because white women are getting blamed for basically everything across the spectrum from left to right now. And there's a certain sense in which some of them feel probably justifiably that there's no way to win. So, um, you know, the, the, the wokies on the left are blaming cis white women for all this bullshit. And then we got people like us who are blaming the progressive white women for all this bullshit. And I think they are responsible for all this bullshit. Yeah. But I just want to inject a note of caution um, into it. I mean, I know you and I know this, but I also know that people form judgments from just watching two people that they don't know very well. Yeah. I am aware of the fact that if you are a white woman out there and you, you're not down with this bullshit, um, that you probably feel backed into a corner. And I, I wouldn't want anything I say to give the impression that I think this is all women or this is all white women, or there's something in the DNA of white women that just makes them terrible. I'm not making that, 
<laughs> that that claim at all. I think all of this is explainable by social and political currents that have that have collided with each other for a long, long time. I agree. I appreciate you bringing that point up, but not, but not because you're not the type of person to, to, to just capitulate and go like, Oh, oh I don't want to get canceled. You're not doing that. No, it's not about um, that. I, I don't want to be unfair. Right. As, as you know, Scott Thompson from uh, kids in the hall, he was on a great uh, episode of your mom's house where he was talking about, you know, he grew up, you know, coming out as, as, as gay, you know, in sketch comedy in the fucking eighties, it was a goddamn war zone. And he said, you know, from, yeah. from, from, from where he was at, he grew up, you know, acutely uh attentive to bullying and that's why he's so anti-woke now you know he may be you oh, know i know Scott thompson is anti-woke i'm really glad to hear that isn't that I, nice I, I expect every famous gay guy to be woke well that's why unfortunately he doesn't get the fucking recognition that motherfucker deserves well i'm sorry to hear that right kids in the hall was fucking great Kids in the Hall was fucking absolutely great. And I mean, they did, you know, this is a guy, this is a guy as the first sketch comedian, you know, out in the eighties and yet he's wearing blackface. Okay. This is some crazy shit. They, there were some wild bunch motherfuckers. Can we talk about blackface? Yes, but I did, I did, I did want to, I just did want to wrap it up just real quick. That, that white women thing in that as much as we're complaining, I think there's a lot of benefit to complaining in that not that they're going to listen to us. Progressive white women, they're, I mean, I, I just got to have that. They, they don't need to learn things. They need, they need boundaries enforced on them. Yes, but we need to say the things that we need to express, not only for our own benefit of getting esteem off, but also so that people can understand, put a framework on, oh, this is why I feel this aversion to this person. This is why I'm so frustrated with, you know, uh, you know, this, you know, uh, Ellen Page, you know, cutting off her tits. Like, this is why I'm so frustrated with it, with the disingenuous, with the childishness. Right. And that's the other thing. But also I'll say that the main thing to fix that, as you were talking about earlier, is not for white women white progressive women to change it's for dudes to man the fuck up right so yep. if anything i know it may not feel that way when we're when we're complaining and whatever but my main thing is for dudes to man the fuck up and talk about self-care get some goddamn guns and learn how to you know learn how to do the you know self-sufficiency learn how to take the l like i was just you know yep. bashing them about all right and st you can start easy i mean before you go and get the guns and learn how to be you know uh he man whatever <laughs> start start simple do you know what men need to do men start saying no yeah Just start saying no <laughs> or when she starts up with her bullshit about how you shouldn't have been watching you know she was looking at your netflix playlist and found mm -hmm. some content that was really problematic we're not having this conversation we're never having this conversation Right. No. And then walk out of the room and enforce that boundary until she gets the message that she is not, in fact, your mother and you are not her little boy. Right. I, I did that recently. I remember there was one in particular, this woman. We're still very good friends now. This was maybe 10, nine years ago. And, you know, we'd been seeing each other on and off for, or we'd been seeing each other a couple of weeks. And um, at one point, you know, she says, she says something that's a little like weird. And I'm like, you're kind of playing games right now. Aren't you playing kind of, you know, like, I don't know. And I was like, you know what? I'm, uh, our stop is coming up and, or that where you would normally, we were on a train, you would normally get off here to go home. Otherwise, you know, we would stay together and, and hang out the rest of the night. I'm, I'm, I want to be alone. You know what I mean? And she was like, she threw a tantrum. She threw kind of a fit. She cried a little bit, not a tantrum, like out loud. Yeah. She was like, I don't understand that. I don't. And, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, no, nope, we're going to hang out another time. I, I'm, 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 I'm setting the boundary. You need to get off at the next stop. And she got off at the next stop. I didn't talk to her for a few days or maybe a day. And then she texted me and was like, yeah, I'm sorry. You were right. And I'm like, there you fucking goddamn go. And it you know didn't need saying? to be a big deal. It didn't need to no. be a big fight that simmered forever. No, it was just like, if you want access to me, you're going to have to be mature. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah. So anyway, um, but also, yes, get guns. <laughs> get guns. <laughs> um, so let's talk about blackface. You okay to go a few more minutes? Yeah, yeah. Um, this has really been on my mind, and I'm, I've been sort of talking about it. I, I might write something about it. I haven't talked about it directly on the show. I, I'm sort of doing my first draft with you. Please. Um. I'm really sick of hearing how to frame this. 
Okay. Let me just, um, I'll put the big controversial thing right out in front so we can get it out of the way. Yes. I don't care about blackface and I don't care that you care about it. Okay. <laughs> and I think you're caring about it is you being a big fucking baby. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, but I'm yes. black. I'm allowed am, to be a baby. I'm, no, I'm, you're not. I'm, if you're black and you feel this way, I am talking to you and I am criticizing you. Yes. yes you're a big fucking baby. Okay. <laughs> How dare I? How dare I say that as a privileged white man? Here's how I dare. Um, let's look. At, let's look at why blackface was originally as offensive as it truly was. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a holdover from from vaudeville and minstrel shows of the late 19th through uh, the early part of the 20th century, in a time when white performers were allowed to perform in areas that black people were not even allowed to step foot in. Right. So not only did you have the insult of being a literal second class citizen who was not allowed to bodily be in the same space, not allowed to use the same bathroom, not allowed to eat in the same dining room. Not only did you have that insult, but you had the injury added to it that the fucking white people who were allowed in there would put shoe polish on their face to impersonate you. That and mock you. That is provocative as fuck. Right. And you and and every bit of rage that black people felt about that was absolutely justified. Yeah. Okay. But guess what? Look at the calendar. Tell me what year it is. <laughs> does it say 1927? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It do does it. What is it? Yeah, it's right. It says 2022, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Stop it. No black person alive today, with the exception of the very, very elderly who have scant memories from small childhood, no black person alive today lived in that world. You have not been, well, yes, there were, there were people, there are black people alive today who were well alive before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Yes, of course. Right. Amos and Andy, I guess, whatever. Right. But. Okay. Um. These conditions don't obtain. You are not second class citizens and you have not been second class citizens for decades. Okay. This is not your pain. No, you didn't inherit it ancestrally. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that. But it's convenient no, to say that's, that. That's Josh. bullshit. And everybody does it. It's not just black people. This is the same thing as my trauma, my right. trauma. Blah, blah. Look, I am a product of actual intergenerational trauma. Right. Cluster B and severe child abuse generation after generation after generation, right? Yeah. So in that sense, yes, we do inherit trauma. But I was actually abused as a child. My trauma doesn't come from memories of other people being abused when I wasn't abused, okay? <laughs> you modern you black got it in the were milk. not abused that way. So I don't believe you. Actually, I don't believe you that you are genuinely that upset about blackface. I think you think you are. Right. But I also think it's very convenient. And here's the second part of it. OK, so I think that whole thing needs to be tamped down because we have lost all sense of perspective and we have made something. We have made that into a moral sin on a par with Holocaust denial. OK. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's greatly out of proportion. And here's where it gets into the feminist shit. Drag is just woman face. It's a woman face. It's just as bad as it's just like black face. It's woman face. It drives me to distraction okay, for a couple of reasons. One, it is a very transparent attempt to co-opt and take for their own. Um, they want to say, look, 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 see, see, we're, we're, we're oppressed just, just like the black people are oppressed by black face. You have to be just as angry about woman face and drag as that. And if you're not, means you're a hypocrite. Stop right. it. Um, it's not an apt comparison. There is a sense in which I understand the anger. It is true that right now, and I talk about this on my show, I'm not a denier. Nobody can say that I'm denying the reality of this. Right now, sick men who are predatory, who are calling themselves women, are in fact allowed to go into women's restrooms. They're allowed to go into women's rape shelters. These men are dangerous. Women are being targeted in certain contexts right now. And it is sick personality disordered men calling themselves women who do it. There is a legitimate reason for women to be angry about this. Hmm. But, but, stop telling me that drag is woman face. 
False eyelashes and wet and wild lipstick are not actual physical features that you were born with. Okay. Right. Blackface is aping physical phenotypic characteristics. Um, phenotypic. What a word. And I have that, I have this on my mind. I have that, I have that word on my mind because, um, it was in an essay written by uh, a woman I, I have great respect for. I differ with her on this particular issue, uh, but she described um, blackface as phenotypic mockery, which I thought was an interesting way to describe it. But I think that women are also the women who object to drag. Um, look, you all have spent the past how many decades of feminism talking about how women are not dolls. They're not creatures full of makeup. They're, you know, they're not naturally born with bra uh, with tits and push-up bras. You said that, and you're right. And now all of a sudden, when you see a guy out here putting on big false eyelashes and drawing on his eyebrows, you're acting like, like that's what woman is? That's the right. thing you, you know, no. Right. It's exacerbated by the fact that, and I have, an, I have an essay to write about, I have an article to write about this, I've been putting it off, but I really do need to write this. Drag today is nothing like what drag was in 1960 or 1970 or even 1980. There is an entire history that has been either forgotten or completely hushed up in order to service the modern feminist agenda against drag. Drag used to be closer to what we call, yeah, and I, I, this is just the word we use, female illusionists or female impersonators. That was the point, the point of a big drag show. They used to have residencies in Las Vegas, some of the really famous ones. I'm trying to remember his name. He used to have a sold out Vegas act. You mean, uh, you mean, you mean drag used to be more Paris is burning than. Yes. And, uh, and also time. it was, you would, you would give a show. There would be, there would be men who would impersonate Tallulah Bankhead, Betty Davis, uh, Barbara Stanwyck, Joan Crawford, Judy Garland, Liza Minnelli, Edith Piaf, any of the pantheon of, of female divas. Mm -hmm. And the thrill was the illusion, right? And people, straight people used to pay good money to go to these nightclub acts to see these guys really put it out, right. you know, really do their very best to do it. Very different tone from what drag is today. Drag today is being a freak. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's an entirely different thing. And, and it just, it disheartens me a little bit because it's, it's another division and it's another way for two groups of people that is women and some gay men to be at each other's, to be at each other's throats in a way. I think they don't have to be at each other's throats and I wish mm. they wouldn't be at each other's throats. It makes me sad. Right. And, you know, in my experience, I have done drag before. Uh, I've talked about it on my show. It was, you know, I was the only straight guy in the back row, in the back hall. I did the like over the top, you know, um, performance art more than anything. Yeah. <clears throat> and there are, I do think there are artistic benefits and, and social benefits to having a, okay, this is essentially a vaudevillian act where somebody yep. is a comedian dressed up as whatever. I'm yes. going to do the weirdest thing and I'm going to do the strangest thing and I'm yeah. going to do the funniest thing and I'm going to read you and I'm going to make this joke. And I'm going to, it's I, fun. I, I, it's fun. W one of my, one of my first episodes was with my friend Pollo Del Mar. <laughs> Pollo I, Del Mar. I just love it. I love it so much. Isn't that a great name? Yes. Uh, Pollo Del Mar is a uh, 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 drag queen from San Francisco, and he he um, uh, is doing is also uh, deep into wrestling and all kinds of crazy shit out there. He's a badass. I love him to death. Um, but at no point in the drag did I ever, up until a few years ago, start thinking of Pollo Del Mar as a she. It's not a separate character. It's not. It's not this like weird. Um, I mean, it's a character, but it's not like this break in in. <laughs> it's his name is Paul. It's not a break in his mental capabilities where now right. he needs to get on stage and express this thing. When I had him on and he talked about it, he was like, "Yeah, I just kind of did it like to be fun, and then I realized I had a lot of fun doing it, and then I kind of wanted to like. It wasn't like this need. I'm expressing myself like Jazz fucking Jennings or some creepy shit like that. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just it's just it's just being performative. I mean, look, you know, he, he, I assume Paul is gay. Mm -hmm. OK, look, there, it's just a plain fact. Gay men, on average, tend to be performative. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm performative. Right. We like to put on a show. 
We like to get attention. We like people to look at us and listen to us and laugh at our jokes. It's right. a common trait. Right. Um, and it can be just that, you know, when I used to go out, when I, when I was much younger and I used to go out to the clubs at the tail end of, of this era of drag, really, uh, cause it had already changed significant, uh, significantly in the eighties and nineties, but it was still nothing like the freak show that's out there today. And there were no, look, they're, drag queens are gay men, okay? Straight men who do this for the most part, excepting lovely Peter here. Hmm. Um, these men, they're not drag queens. They're fetishistic transvestites, okay? Right. This is not the same thing at all. The motivation is not the same. The outcome is not the same. Right. But when we would hang out with the queens, yeah, you called them she when they were in drag because part of the fun was the gimmick, right? Right. You know, oh, she's over there. She'll get you, you know, anybody know who's got some good blow? Pollo Del Mar's over there, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing, right? right? But nobody, zero, zero people in that community said, I'm a real woman. They would have yes. laughed at you. They would have <laughs> laughed at you and said, what's wrong with you? And they wouldn't have fucked him. Yes, ex exactly. And nobody, nobody outside there was saying, you have to always use the pronouns because that means it's a real yeah, woman. Yeah. Like that, that craziness, <laughs> that, that lunacy is not yeah. something that came from the gay male community that came from somewhere else mm. uh, and latched itself on. So. Right. Well, let's start wrapping up, but I, I did, it does circle back. <laughs> uh, it does circle back into our initial conversation um, with exactly like Brentley, um, uh, uh, used to said you know the old the old guard i'm i i mean like fucking chuck nip like i miss that shit i was looking it up last night chuck nip i.e shirley q liquor and uh betty butterfield i think is betty butterfield yes <laughs> his character's like and it's a white lady and she's like i was diagnosed with bipolar one two and eight like, and, it's just, <laughs> and she's just like breathing and sweating and just i don't know if i can go on and, I know. and it's and it's a caricature of that character because we know we all the know that dude. southern white church lady right we all know yeah. that person who's just like ah, 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 pay attention to me ah. um so anyway I miss that shit. And apparently Chuck Nip, when people when people were ragging on him, Rue fucking Paul Defended came to him. his defense. I know, and it still didn't work. It's fucking insane. I know. Do you know who you know who you might like? Um, mm. we'll, we'll leave you off with this. There, there is one queen who is still working. There may be more than one, but I, I happen to know this guy who who is does that old school comedic drag, but it's also hyper absurdist called Dina Martina. Oh, I love, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know Dina Martina? Oh, fuck yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she I usually wish... plays in Provence town. Right, <laughs> I'm going to Providence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to Provence town. What's that one she did, uh, uh, goddamn um, fucking... <laughs> She, she did a uh, uh, Western Career College or something. Some commercial. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Spinsters, hurry. hurry. I, know. I got my man at Bryman. How Bry about you? <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. It's so wonderful. I know. I, I'm you know, really sorry, sis. That's terrible. Right. And there's also there's also the goddamn uh, President's Day. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Like there's uh, it's Dina Martinez. It's really show. funny. And when he does interviews, when he does interviews as Dina Martinez on on radio shows, he oh. never breaks character. Oh. It's the whole thing. The whole backstory is there. The mispronunciations. It's just glorious. I will say, because this might I don't I doubt it would ever get back to to fucking him. But there's another real one of my one of my I thought was like a, a artistic North Star for a little while. Um, not for one something I would, but, but like for the balls that it took to do Dina Martina esque type of stuff is mm -hmm. Christine. Do you know Christine? I don't know. Christine, um, with like is two that a nineteen fifty eight Plymouth Belvedere? <laughs> I don't know what the hell, but okay. um, she would do all kinds of like disgusting over the top look like heroin baby you know that was her character is like c dirt dirty fingernails and like i'm gonna fuck your dick you know? like, 
Christine is one of the creepiest and anywhere she would go, like that was what all the other drag queens up on would be like creeped out by her. Like that was the shtick. You know what I mean? Oh God, Christine, get her away from, get her away from the toilet. Get her away. You know I mean? <laughs> She'll drink it all. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they would do. But I, I was following her and she's just like, she's gotten into like, or he or whatever has gotten into the trans thing so deep and not, not into being mm. trans, but into the defense and letting yeah. these cock, these humorless, artistic list, boring, watery, mental illness, full motherfuckers infiltrate and ruin. Yep. I'm all for sexual fucking freedom. Go fuck who you goddamn want. Cut off your dick. Hooray. But like, Jesus fucking Christ, don't let him ruin the good shit we have here. Don't let him ruin. Christine, you know, is, is friends with Peaches, you know, Peaches. Yep. Yeah, like that whole like okay, we're gonna be really uh, androgynous and and provocative and creepy and whatever, and go for it. I'm happy for that, but you don't have to take it the next step and like let's cut cut off baby dicks, man. Jesus fucking Christ. I know. I know. Well, anyway, sorry, but yeah, <sighs> it's disappointing, and I miss. I guess I miss I'll just stay home and enjoy my toiletries. That's all you can do. You can't do nothing. You know, all right. Easter. Easter do not, do mean, not about mean about hats. hats. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a slave at my own church. <laughs> they need to get some spray for them roaches they got all crawled up in here. I got I, I to gotta check the temperatures, make sure it's not too humid. It's not too humidity. <laughs> Everybody oh, go look God. up Shirley Shirley Q Liquor. There's a bunch of old, and the music is perfect. A bunch of I old know. YouTube clips. The rollicking old piano gospel. Oh, and let's just put it out there. I'm adding Chuck Nip. Please, Chuck Nip, if this ever gets Chuck, to you. We love please, you. We love you. Please come on the goddamn show. Um, everyone, thank you, goddamn it, Josh Locum, for, for coming thank on the show. Thank you for having again. me, Peter. Thank it's you. always a blast hanging out with you. I hope to hang out with you again. Is is uh is what's his, is uh the 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 I gotta figure out if what was that thing we went to last year or this year in Dallas? We oh, met there. Um, um um uh the Myth Informed Con uh the yeah. Better Discourses Conference. Um, I haven't checked in with them in a while. I'm sure they're putting yeah. something on. Yeah, yeah, I should check in. Thanks for reminding me of that. Well, if they need the the next MC. I'm here. <laughs> That's right, baby. Oh, I mean, I love my Carlo, but you know, it's time to level up, guys. All right. That's yeah. what I <laughs> he, he was really good. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him you said that. Uh, yeah, I'm fucking he owes me a goddamn call anyway, little bastard. <laughs> um, Josh, where can people find you? Please promote yourself. Disaffected on YouTube, on all podcast platforms, on Rumble, on Odyssey. Very soon our website will be back up. When it is, it will be disaffected.fm. Thank you, Peter. Beautiful. Wherever you're listening, make sure you subscribe, share, rate, review, or you are racist. And go stream my new song, my new cover song that's on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash rule62pete. I love you all very much, and I will end the broadcast. Bye, everybody. Bye.